wasn't a great start, and um, obviously, again, we, we seemed to dig ourselves in a bit of a hole. Um, and we got caught, two really good finishes, and um, then it's a mountain to climb from there. And, uh, we had a couple of pretty good opportunities to make it interesting, didn't fall, and um, you always, I suppose, vulnerable to a counter-attack, and then when the ball hit the referee, it was a lovely, <coughs> lovely interception by the referee that set them on in a lovely counter-attack, and that kind of killed the game off. So. Well, they're pretty soft, weren't they? It's not, it doesn't have to be a rocket scientist to work that out. But, but you know, like, um, as I said, the guys kept trying. They, they, they kept working hard, and, and it, they just needed something to kind of fall their, their way. Um, just one of those finishes, something, just a bit of luck. Um, and it didn't come. And you've got to earn it, and it just didn't come. But um, in saying that, you know, we write this one off. This is, that's, this is football. We write. We're still in a lovely position. We, uh, we move on, and um, we've got a very important game now on Wednesday. Um, I, I, as I said, I just think they, you know, probably felt sorry for themselves. It's, it's because they're killer blows, aren't they? When you kind of give away like the goals we conceded, they're a bit, you know, because they're our, our own doing, and then they they're kind of a double whammy, and and it's hard to get up from that. And um, but they kept working hard, and then you're just looking for that one little break, that one little something, and it and it kind of never came. And even in the second half, um, you know, we had. Three or four really good opportunities um, that didn't that didn't fall. Um, um, that's life. You know, we just got to we gotta dust ourselves off, forget about it. Good thing about um, football, you got to have short-term memories and you got to move on. Brian, you're, you're two, two and one in August, but do you see a trend, a, a somewhat worrying trend in some of these soft goals, passes that led to the first two? Uh, that both times the New England players almost had an unimpeded path. Yep, yeah, do. Um, been seeing that for the last X amount of games. Unfortunately, um, you know, when you've got a, a few key pieces missing, um, you know, they're, they're influential. And when you're, when you're salary capped and you can't really, you, you wish you have cover in every single position at, you know, you know, um, off Stephen Cordell type, Justin Morrow, all these type, Warren Gravel, all these type, but we don't. So then guys are going to have to try and put, you know, the jigsaw puzzle together and, um, you know, we're trying to play some, you know, position-based football and keep the ball, which is, ironically, is really good and we're losing games now. So all you guys used to hassle me and critique me about because we didn't possess the ball. Yeah, yeah. Shows you what a lot of rubbish that is. Um, but you're right. It is, a, um, it is a concern and we try to... Um, talk about it and, and all that. But the guys came out, they came out stiff, they came out, looked like a wee bit aggravated mentally, I think. I think they felt like this was way more of a pressured game than probably actually they think. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but given the injuries you had and the situation you have, does it help that the general manager comes out the day before and says the team has to kick it up a notch? Not at all. Absolutely not. There's 11 games, there was 11 games left in the season. We had two games in hand of the third, third place team in third position. I mean, I've been, I've won this league, played in it for four years, been in the Premier League for 10 years, played in the World Cup Olympics, played in some pretty hot, pressured games. There's one thing that I do know is this was not one of them. It affected the guys. And what we do at Toronto FC is we keep it in-house. Everything we do, we keep inside the four walls. And the players, coaching staff, everything stays in the four walls. So if you are going to criticise anybody today, it's me. I pick the team. I try and play a certain style. Criticise me. Leave the players out of it. But unfortunately, um, things get happened and um, didn't help. And as you saw at the start of the game, I think the guys were very, 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 let's just say aggravated, I'd say. When it's not a pressure game. You guys are kidding me. Come on. Ten games left in the season. Ten games left in the season. Long way to go. It seemed like for the opening uh, half an hour that Odura, or, sorry, not Odura, Jonathan was kind of tucked in the middle and that Luke was kind of a little bit on the right and then you changed it up after yeah. that. Was, what was the reason for that? Why did he 
because I wanted, I wanted Ozo to play in between the lines, and he's really good at that, and he makes lovely little late runs, and we, I wanted to try and get him in there. Um, and Luke's played that for Swansea many a times um, out in that left, so he's played in that kind of, you know, it's, it's a 4-3-3 really. Um, but it just wasn't happening for us. It kind of wasn't falling from there, and, and we kind of got a wee bit isolated with a combination play. It doesn't help when you're down a couple of goals. N n none of the facts are the system. Um, but when you're down soon, you start forcing stuff, don't you? You start trying stuff, and, and we had to change it to go back to where we were. But wasn't it a bit risky just, you know, put the back lines a little bit outside of the two starters to kind of impose that kind of move? Well, it was a wee bit of a, a defensive, more defensive shape with two sitting midfielders with Colin and Michael sitting in behind. So it was with that in mind that we had a wee bit of protection in that because, as Neil pointed out, those kind of ones were happening and it was a, it was a bit more of a one to protect, but obviously... Um, Obviously, we have to look at the tape, and it, it didn't really, it didn't really work out. There are other teams in a, in a similar position. Kansas City's been, uh, you know, had their asses handed to them the last two games. Um, how do you, you know, put this behind you? How do you go into that locker room and say, guys, we're still in the playoff picture? You know, we're still going to get there. Well, that's what you, exactly what you just said. Like, uh, nobody, I'm not panicking. Nobody's panicking. Is Whatever whatever's been said from anybody at TFC, from the coaches and the players, we're oh my god, we're we're more than confident in what we're going to do. We got ten more games. We got five at home, five away, important games. It's in our hands. So that's what we want. We'll stick with the players. We'll we've always got their backs, and and we'll uh, we'll stick together, and and we'll uh, we'll do everything we can to um to as you say. To keep on going and try and make these plans. What do you make of the emerging storyline amongst the fans that perhaps, uh, as we saw today, the, the want to forgive Sarri play regularly or to feature late in the game more often, more consistently? Is that something that you listen to from the chance at making that decision to start or to settle on today? No, not at all. Not at all. I mean, I've got up front. I've got generally, normally, I've got Jermaine Defoe, Luke Moore, Gilberto, Bright DK. You know, this Ozo can play under there. This is it's tough. You know, there's an, I know there's an emotional attachment to to um, to certain players, but that's from three or four years ago, five, six years ago, whatever it was. So there's always an emotional attachment. And unfortunately, unfortunately, I have to deal with the reality, and um, and it's about what I see every single day. And and by the way, Dero's been just been doing great. He's been doing absolutely fantastic. And I thought he was really good when he came on. But so is Bright TK. Bright TK has been brilliant at training. So is Luke Moore. So is you know Ozo. So is Joe, as you as you see. So it's just you know it's competition, a competition up top. And um, but emotional factors. No, yeah, we live in the real world. Well, I think we've proved this season that we, especially lately, where we're, we are confident that we can score goals. We did against Houston. It uh, wasn't a problem. But I think we kind of felt we were sorry for ourselves. And um, again, I think um, players mentally weren't right from the start, I'd say. And um, when that happens, you know, as you know, with Toronto teams, it's, it's precious stuff for all the teams, you know. Players affect it. So that's why we want to keep everything in house. Everything in house, so um, so yeah, they kind of felt a wee bit sorry for themselves, and um, and in a way I can't blame them. Um, tried to pick themselves up, tried to work hard, and they did. They never gave up. And I, as I said, if I think if they if we just took one of those chances or just something fell our way, then then yeah, it, um, we might have kicked on. We might have got that energy. The crowd needed a bit of energy, didn't it? The crowd needed something, but it just never fell for us that day. Happens as um, could just mention happened to Kansas City. Happened to everybody. So, um, great thing about football. We've got a game Wednesday. We forget about it. We move on. Uh, why do you want to keep everything in house, which is understandable? Uh, is there any indication going into this game? This is the first time the team has been doing like that. Is there any indication to you that the game will come? I mean, that the game will just change it, but what's this? Well, I think I've kind of made my view of probably why. 
But in saying that, you know, as I said, we've been in some, I've been in some pretty pressured situation games and and worse. This wasn't one, but it was made into one. And um, we've got to, we, to be fair, we've got to be better than that. We've got to be better. We're used to, as most Torrens, you're used to getting it from the outside. That's why it should never, never come from inside. Never. Thanks, guys. Thanks.